Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and I'm going to start a new video here in just a minute. It's a, a call I was on with Tank and Raptor X or Isaiah and Hellbent, um, and the four of us were working on something. We spent actually like five and a half hours in total on this call. Um, we covered a lot of different stuff. Now, this recording is just the tail end of it because I didn't actually record the vast majority of it, mainly because there was dogs and stuff in the background barking, and so I figured... It's not going to make for a good video. What you're going to learn here is if you have a web page that you're working with and you want to add extra elements to it, uh, Tank shows us how to inject and add to a given page dynamically. So this is pretty cool, right? You can add, of course, the DOM is a live thing and you can inject things, easily update that. It doesn't happen on the website, right? It happens on your browser. But if you're using a browser to communicate with your uh, user, it's a great way to be able to change that list and dynamically make it look cool. So hope you enjoy this. And first, do me a favor. Go ahead and like the video. You know you're going to like it anyway, right? I'd really appreciate it if you'd like it now because the more likes we get, the more we actually get views. And, you know, it just helps get uh, my channel more popularity. So thank you very much. Enjoy the video. Cheers. That's a good thing to record, yeah. Okay. So just... That grabs an element, right? So that's my right. element list. Right. So just one second. Uh, now I have to create an element outside of it. Like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, help! Why is it? Doesn't matter what we call these. Uh, Child or create? No, it's append. Okay. I think. No, you append it after you create. After it. creating it, right? Create element. Oh, there it is. That's where it was. Now, local name, it'll be an A, maybe? Yeah. So now I have a new link. All right, so now, new so link. I need to add the href, probably. Yeah, just, just for the sake of all of this, we're going to make this really uh, not yeah, totally Google, but, Yeah, no, no, but it would be like... And I think this this thing uses a data content. Google.com, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The link is not defined. Well, it is. All right. Um, that failed. Well. Yeah. Okay. Blah blah blah. JavaScript objects versus normal variables. Things change with ECMA six. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, you must be kidding me. So you, no. you what? I so if it is an ob if it is an object, you you cannot declare it as a variable now. Oh, why? Oh, it clearly is. Right, let me see. New link. It is. Now, if you put the dot right now, so if you put the dot, you should get a few things for it. Yeah, and, you should get it. There is their href right here. You should be able to kind of like, yeah. <laughs> about. Yeah, about really? blank. You. Let me let me let me try. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> about blank. Uh, that worked. Huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> hold on. So, let, me try. let me try it myself. Hey, yeah, hold on. Yeah, that. There. That should work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right. What anyway. is that? Hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know if I want to figure that out right now. 
<laughs> that is so stupid. <laughs> About blank is good. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe, 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 maybe put another website that is not Google. Maybe that's it. Maybe I don't know. Um, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't it, it matter. really yeah. doesn't matter. The the point is the process here. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. Uh, this would be good. Yeah, and then we append it, right? Oh my God, what? Hold on. No, hold on. Hold on. Because it says that it's not defined, but hold on. Right. So new link is defined right here. Mm -hmm. right. And then inner text. Either right. one should work. Uh-huh. Is it being stupid because you're not like waiting for the list to show up first? Yeah, I think it is. I think if you don't if you don't if you if you type okay. it yourself, I, I'm going to blame this on the fact that we're on a Zoom call <laughs> and it's messing with the debug. Uh, right. Yeah, that can be append child, and then I'm just going to append new link, for example. That's right. Uh, that has okay. to be and appended so now, somewhere. Yeah, so it should be at the end. Oh, there it is. Test. Yeah. And clicking on it or double clicking should bring a blank page. Yep, now, it should. Hold on. Right, okay. But, oh, wow. That's so basically. I, I know, it's to... right. It's devastating, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's not devastating, but it's good. Um, it's good. It's for, good. The, it's good. for the record, when you do the create object, you can pass an entire HTML string to it. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? You can pass an entire HTML element to it when you do the create object. You don't have to assign the property separate as separate lines. Oh, but, so 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 basically, if I just grab, for example, new link, um, and I just grab, for example, if you the, the, did an inspect element from over there and in our HTML, for example, can I do that and just pass the no, whole thing? No, 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 no. Okay, here, uh, let, let me. So uh, we we've got this right. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, it, and if I instead, when I copy, I um, copy the outer HTML. Right. Okay. Then I go to the console. Create element. Um, document. Dot. Create. Make sure I freaking select it from the list or before it gets mad. Um, are you single? You have to. I'm sure there's. Oh, oh, you can do that. Yeah, uh, there, there's there's no rule about this that says you can only insert a tag so, name. Let me what? Unless they've changed it. Hold on. It's not a policy. They've changed name. it. It's they've changed it since the last time I did this. It used to accept it all. Oh. So yeah, you got to sign the attributes separately. I will do, I will double check on that. So, so, and this is the thing, because that's what I was um, kind of like thinking about doing, which is just grabbing the freaking HTML and just putting it inside. So let's say, for example, um, uh, let me see, element, that would be uh, document element, that would be an A. Um, what is the, the second part? Options. I don't need options right now, right? So I no, and, and they, they, they've changed the create element functions. So right. So now, now I have my element right here, but I could just grab this uh, inner uh, HTML here and just set this up in there. Maybe. No, it'd be outer HTML. Oh, so it would be the outer. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Uh, outer HTML, and now. I would set set it to this thing now. 
my issue here is that okay, let me put the picture. Use a single quote, yep. mark. Yeah, the different one, and that has no parent node. Okay, so I cannot know because now, but here's the thing, maybe it's inner. No, inner is everything that happens between the A tags. Okay. Yeah, but and then it if says we, like, I, I, well, maybe what it says is that I should set a parent for it first. So if I go to my list um, and my list dot append child, um, so my list dot append child, what, why? Oh, did we lose that? That um, okay. Yeah, so that, we refresh the page. Okay, right. So, so uh, that would be a new element. So my list, right? Let's make it like that. That would be a document query selector. Say, for example, this guy, right? Now, yeah. my list dot uh, append child, and in this case, instead of new link, would be el. After I append it, now I should be able to outer HTML and say that should work now. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. And now right, if I that? do let's, that, let's go there and look. at the bottom, there should be a computer name, yeah. yep, right? There you go. So I could do that. Okay, so I could. Which, because it didn't have anything to hang its hat on, you know, to. to right, exactly. It. So, right. so it was yeah. telling me that it was missing a parent. So yeah. as soon as I append it to the main parent, then it, it worked. And, and it actually goes ahead and creates this, as you can see, a computer name down now, here is the same could, up here. Could you tie it, though, to the append at the same time and set it there? Um, you mean like adding the uh, outer H HTML I mean, right there? I don't think so. I mean, are, are, you, are you really, um, are, are we really trying to have a conversation about <laughs> Making this fewer lines, or, or do you really care? No, no, no I don't, I don't, because I don't, at some point, fewer lines no, just gets to be no, really unreadable. Oh, trust me, I yeah. agree. Yeah. I, I, I'm about to I, go on one of my rants about unreadable code <laughs> here. No, 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 no. Don't worry. I, I do. I, I feel like you exactly the same. So basically, no. what I do have to do is the same thing in here. So basically, I just have to do my document up. So. Uh, first of all, my list, I know what the list is. That's my list. This is my query selector here. So I just need to append a child. So first of all, document, document, uh, create element. That would be an A tag. That would be my, and then this is my, uh, link. It doesn't matter. And now, for my link, I have to append it to my document here. So that would be append child, that would be link, right? And then after I append it, then I just need link dot um, outer HTML to be <coughs> Whatever I want it to be. Right. So in this case, I would just put, um, yeah, or okay. basically just do the two things myself because it's the href. Um, the href is the one that has uh, the URL. So that would be string split um, current value, and that would be by tab, um, and that would be one. And the second part would be, this is the thing that I wanted to kind of double check, that they are using the data content, this guy here. I, but I don't think if I could access it directly like that. So it doesn't matter. I mean, you can set it. It's, a, it's, not, it's nothing except an attribute of an element. Um, yeah, so, so I would have to use the, the get attribute like this. Um, so get attribute. I would have data content or set attribute, I think it is. Hold on, let me see. So yeah, console, that would be um, DL set attribute. Yeah, set attribute. 
and that would be the name, that would be the data content, and that would be to test, for example. Um, that is EL set attribute that is for this guy. Exactly. Um, not exactly. We change it. Um. Hold on. Um, is that the one that we created? Yeah, that's the one that we created because it's doubled. And that one. Well, if we did it with text, then let's do it with text. It's okay. So that was inner text, I think, is what you use. No. Outer. Hold on. No, no, no. I'm talking about before you set up here. Inner oh, text. It, for, yeah. for the, for the yeah. text of the link, yes. Right, 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 right. right. So and, and whether, right. since it's plain text, it doesn't matter if you use inner text or inner HTML, the, the uh, effect is the same. You would use inner HTML if there was actual HTML code to put inside there. Like if there was also, say, a span and a, you know. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, right. no. The thing is that as I was noticing on the original one, and I'm using the, the CSS file from AutoHotKey, so I'm following whatever uh, is being done on the site, uh, they do not set the text for the, for the anchors. They don't have text. Oh, oh. And, and so uh, they, they're add, actually set, setting it into the data content. But as soon as you set it with the inner text, it seems to be that it just put it into the data content automatically. So it doesn't matter. I'll just do it that way. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, in any case, so basically, this is what I had to do for each of my results. Um, but, and here's the thing, before I add all that, I have to clear it. So you have to, I, to oh, 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 rank you have to it, right? Yeah. Because oh, well, but that's the thing. So inner HTML equals blank, right? Okay. So that would be inner HTML equals blank, actually, maybe. Yep. No. That would no. blank it, and then just parse and put whatever you typed in. That should make it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this tomorrow. But all the other things, like I know, um. This on key press set timer actually got me. Like this thing got me right there. We, it punches we, you right in the. It punches you right in the balls and makes you smile about it. Like it? holy shit! Like <laughs> I wouldn't have actually, uh, uh, because I was thinking exactly the same as you said. Like okay, it seems to me that we're accessing before, and then, and and then I was playing around with the time uh, with the with the set time sleep, yeah. uh, with with the sleep. I'm sorry. I have never actually thought about setting a timer and how that would affect. So that is yeah. something that we should keep in mind. Sometimes, whenever yeah, that, we're that, working with that timers, pseudo threading is something yeah, that threading from right Sean, so, from Sean way back in the day. Yeah, uh, because he used to do it all the time in, in a lot of his code. So um, that's that's something that we should keep in mind. There's sometimes that instead of actually using a sleep, it's, it might be better to just use a timer and kind of like open up a different kind sure. of like pseudo thread instead yeah, it of just, it, command. It just makes it execute one time outside of the current synchronous operation. That's all we're doing. Man, that is, that is insane. <laughs> that is insane though. Okay, so thank you very much for yeah, your help. You. I actually think we got the main issue that I had for today, which by the looks of it, we have this thing is almost finished. Yeah, this yeah. thing is almost finished um, yeah. for what we wanted it to be, right? And I learned a few things like just caching out some stuff like this. Uh, that is an interesting concept. I haven't used it before, but yeah, that's an interesting thing. So I, um, while, while we're on the subject of hinky uh, nonsense, uh, and, and I haven't gone back and done anything else with it since because I've been in pretty bad shape, but it's worth knowing that if, if it's needed for any reason. Um, um, I have OAuth automation uh, oh. done where you get a token. Oh, that's awesome. So retrieving a, a, an OAuth token without displaying a bunch of bullshit to the user, done. Oh, cool. That's great. Um, yeah, I, that I, is just, 
I haven't gone back and done anything else with it since then because I've been feeling bad, but that, that's done. Um, right. So it detects whether or not you just have have no login cookie at all and will prompt you for it. But if you have, you'll never see anything. It'll pick, you, you can configure whatever ID you want it to have selected from your list and it'll just find it for you and, and do it. And that's for, um, for, 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 for Chrome or for any browser? Um, it's not browser specific. I'm doing it with a shell. It is not browser specific. I, I, I'm sorry, it's doing it with Internet Explorer. Sorry, I apologize. Okay, um, okay, yeah. Um, and but it works right right yeah of course now the thing is that what we're because with the internet explorer we have been um we do know that that is kind of like doable with because the, the cookies are there you know but the problem is that most of the people who are using chrome then will have to log into internet explorer for us to be able to kind of like um leverage the cookies then why would they have to log into internet explorer why would they even be aware of it? Yeah, but that's the question to me uh, that I was asking right now. Like, the, the code that you just created, is it depending on Internet Explorer or is it... Well, it's running, off, it's running within Internet Explorer. Uh-huh. My, ne my next step is um, to uh, do a uh, Selenium plugin and let you just configure which browser you want it to work in. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. That's great. No, because of that, because the thing is that as there are some people with different browsers, like the way for right. us to kind of like leverage oh. whatever browser you're using. But the point is, is once you have the token, does it really matter? Yeah, yeah. no. After you have the token, then that doesn't matter at all. Because and if you never see, token. and if you never see the browser, does it matter? No, no, not at all. <laughs> okay. Well, as no, 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 no. But that's yeah. that's what we actually really need. But um, uh, what what I was just thinking is whether you had to be logged in in that specific browser first. And that's where the question came. Well, that's what I'm saying. If there's no uh, login credential in the browser, it'll prompt you for it. But it's uh -huh. a, it, it, it's, uh, it's not quite a Chromeless window, but. Uh, okay, no, 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 but it, 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 it prompts you for it. Yeah. Right, okay. okay. All, oh, all that's you have good. is a title bar and. Right, uh, exactly. And then just the ask login. for, yeah, whatever you want to ask so, for. Okay. So basically, oh. you've created your own way to log in. Log in. Yeah. And if you've ever logged in, you don't have to do anything. Right, once that's you right. Have, if it's, right. Once you have Google credentials in a browser, it's, you're done. No, no, right? yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. That's awesome. So, okay, cool. then. Um, well, yeah, man. Um, thank you very much for your help. I'm going to be leaving now. Um, I hope okay. you guys have a great night. Uh, and we're going to be talking about later, huh? See you later. Cool. Bye. 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 Thanks. All. Hey, thank you for watching that video. And if you just enjoyed that, you probably aren't at a beginning level. And I highly recommend you work through the intermediate auto hockey course. You can see the URL over my head here, which will give you a coupon discount. And you learn a lot of you know more advanced things of working with controls, loops, and functions, and objects. There's a lot of great stuff with file paths and, and then what you can do. AutoHockey is an amazing tool. The uh, Having the course will help you have a direction of where to go and a, and a flow and a work through. Because otherwise, we kind of learn AutoHockey here and there, and it gets to be a big ball of mess. Um, so the, our, my, having the course helps you make sure you work through it in a, in a systematic way. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers.